best camera of 2023 or the best camera ever? Sony Alpha A6700. So that was pretty fun, uh, but seriously. So this is Sony's new A6700. It's their new flagship crop sensor camera. Uh, it's got all the new technology in it. So we're gonna run through it today and uh, let's get into it. So this isn't the initial opening, but I kept all the packaging and have put everything back exactly the way that it came from the factory. So I'm gonna do a quick unboxing for you so you know exactly what you can expect when opening up your new baby for the first time. Okay, so we'll get right in there. Okay, so initially we got uh, some of our paperwork over here on the right, uh, warranty card, protection plans, uh, some you know quick start guides, reference material, etc. So we will put that off to the side, and then we get into the meat and potatoes of everything. So first off, uh, we'll just start with kind of some of the basics here. Obviously, a neck strap, uh, pretty basic stuff. So we'll put that off to the side. Uh, included is an, uh, we get one NPFZ100 battery. We get in a little baggie here. We get the EVF uh, or electronic viewfinder, an eyepiece for it. And really that's the only accessories that it comes with. So I ended up getting the kit that came with the 18 to 135 millimeter lens. Um, this thing retails for about 650 bucks, but uh, if you get it in with the kit, you know, they, they shave off some, some money for you there. So it uh, comes packaging here with some nice little felt. Put that off to the side and yeah, so here's our, here's our lens. So there's that and then Lastly, and most importantly, the camera body, you know, comes in some plastic and there she is. So here's the A6700, the way that it comes out of the box. Uh, mine came glass side out. I don't know if that's normal, but um, I mean, I guess it is because that's the way that it came. Uh, pretty simple packaging, not a lot of extra fluff. The one notable thing that it doesn't come with is a charger or charging cable. You can see that's everything that's in the box, so nothing else in there. Um, it does charge via USB-C, so hopefully uh, you have one of those handy, which I think most people probably do at this point. So no, no real issues with that, but it would have been nice if it you know, came with a charger. So the, yeah, there's a quick unboxing. Um, not a lot to it, but what a pretty camera. Uh, it feels great in the hand, and we'll go through some of the specs next. All right, guys, um, before we get into some of the internal specs, I just wanted to kind of do a quick walk around of the camera to show you exactly what uh, this thing has. Um, starting with the top of the camera, so, well, before we get into the top of the camera, you'll notice that there's something much different about this camera now um, than the last time you saw it. So what I did is I added the uh, small rig cage onto it. What this does is it gives you an Arca Swiss rail, um, or at least plate, compatible plate on the bottom. And it offers a, a, you know, a lot of attachment points for different accessories, as well as an additional cold shoe and just overall protection of the camera. So it, you know, it gives it a nice hefty feel. Uh, it does add some weight, obviously, because it is metal. But um, overall, just I like that it gives the camera some protection. And probably one of the main reasons I got it is because of the Arca rail on the bottom. So I don't have to have a separate plate to mount this into my tripod. Uh, but yeah, so just real quick, um, small rig. I did do a, a quick little video showing you how to install this baby uh, if you want to check that out. So I guess first, let's just stop at the start at the top of the camera. Um, so I'm just going to ignore the, the cage and just tell you the, the features of the actual camera. So we have a cold shoe, uh, it's offset from the center of the camera, but it, you know, it's straight in line with the lens. Uh, this is what they call a smart cold shoe. So it is compatible with a lot of the Sony microphones, maybe some of the newer ones. Uh, you know, you slip it in there, you don't have to have a separate connector 
into the microphone port um, for one of these uh, smart microphones. Um, you just you know put it in the shoe, turn it on, and it should. I, I, you probably have to change a couple settings here and there, but uh, it'll connect directly. Um, it's pretty smart. So you also have your um, your settings dial here. So your photography and your um, you know your different aperture priority modes, auto, uh, some custom settings that you can do, some custom profiles, and then something that's new on this camera is you actually have this dedicated mode dial. So photography video and then slow and quick modes for your different time lapse uh, or hyperlapse stuff um, you also have it's kind of hidden here under the small rig but you do have a second dial over here to help with your exposure um, this one is out of the box at least it's set to the shutter speed so i haven't changed that um, this is adjusting the shutter speed you have up on the top you also have a custom button uh, C2, so you can uh, set that to whatever you want. You can put it to a certain mode or a certain function in video versus camera modes. Uh, we have a dedicated record button here, and then we have our on off switch. And then also on the front, we have this uh, dial here that you can play with. Um, you can basically set it to whatever you want. Right now it's set to um, the aperture. So that's how it was out of the box. I just kind of left the exposure settings on this thing, uh, what they were. So we got aperture on the front. We have shutter speed up here on the top. And then that's pretty much it for the top of the camera. Let's go around to this other side real quick. You get one more custom function button over here. On the back of the camera, it's pretty typical controls here. You know, trash, uh, media, you get your dial. Um, this does spin. Um, you get a, another function button and then an autofocus on. So this is a, a, a button you can play with. Uh, you can mess with the setting on this. I haven't really played with it all that much, but you have that autofocus button. At the very top, you got your menu button. Uh, you also have the electronic viewfinder over here. So this is a 0.39 inch OLED with uh, 2.36 million dots. It's got 0.7 times magnification and a refresh rate of 120 FPS. Uh, I don't, I honestly don't use it all that much, but I know uh, if you're more into the photography side of things, you should, uh, use that a lot, or I assume you would be using that a lot more than me. Um, so it is there if you want it. Then you have the fully rotating three inch touchscreen with the newer menu system and 1.04 million dots of resolution. So I'll just turn this on real fast so you can get a, an idea of some of the different controls. Um, so it's just set on, well, let's change it to video mode because that's what I'm more used to. Um, so you can see here, it's got these different touch, uh, you know, shortcut buttons off on both sides. You can swipe to the side to get rid of those if you want it a little bit cleaner, or you can leave it there. Also, if you swipe up from the bottom, this is your essentially function menu. So you can either click the FN button or swipe up from the bottom. It takes you to the same place and you can customize the buttons that are in this function menu. So you can really, you know, get everything that, that you want access to quickly uh, right here. So that's kind of the back of the camera. Let's turn it off. Um, let's go real quick to this other side. So this is the side where you're going to have all your ports. Um, at the top, you have a USB-C port as well as your microphone input. In the middle, you have your single SD card slot. And then at the bottom, you have uh, your micro, HDMI, and a headphone jack if you wanted to plug in some headphones and get your direct audio. Um, do some testing that way. So a lot of good ports on this thing. Um, oh, that one doesn't auto close. So you just got to make sure you flip that little thing. And then these ones click shut. Um, going down to the bottom of the camera. So you'll see with the small rig on, if I open the battery compartment, it doesn't open all the way, but it does have uh, what this small rig has is this little lever. So then you can open it up that way, you know, take out your battery, whatever you need to do, um, and then close it back up. There we go. And if you are interested in the small rig, it, it has this really handy wrench here. So, uh, you know, if you need to adjust anything on your tripod, uh, this just stays magnetically on the bottom. Another, you know, super convenient thing. 
about this cage. Um, so that's pretty much it for all the different buttons and stuff. Uh, let's see, did I miss anything? I don't believe so. Um, yeah, so it's a magnesium alloy frame, comes in weighing 493 grams, so it's pretty light, feels great to hold in the hand. Uh, it's dust and moisture resistant. That's resistant, not proof, so don't go dunking this thing underwater for those cool snorkeling videos. But um, yeah, so that's you know the build, the physical body of the camera, and uh, very professional feeling. And that's pretty much it. So let's get into some of the internals, and we'll go back over to the couch, and then talk about some of the other feature that, features of this camera. So stick around. Now let's get into some of the internals. Um, there's a lot to go through here, so I have my notes in front of me, and so bear with me. I'm just going to rattle some of them off, and then we'll get to the fun stuff a little bit later. Uh, so starting with the sensor, it does have a 26 megapixel APS-C crop sensor. Supposedly it's the same sensor that's in the FX30. It handles uh, ISO from 50 all the way up to 102,400, which is massive. I don't know if what I would ever shoot in that, um, unless I'm in the pitch black, but you have that capability as well. Uh, it's capable of shutter speeds up to 1 8,000th of a second, so super fast. It can shoot up to 11 frames per second in continuous shooting. If shooting in JPEG, I believe that um, with the buffering capabilities that equates to about 90 seconds of continuous shooting, which is a ton. Um, and if you're shooting in RAW, I believe it's around the 10 second mark. Don't quote me on that. I haven't tested it, but that should be in that ballpark. Uh, so that's kind of the sensor information and the capabilities of the shutter. So now is where it gets a little bit more fun. Uh, probably the reason that you're going to be choosing this camera is because of some of the onboard features and the capabilities of what this camera can do. So one of the things is the new dynamic active steady shot mode, which combines the, you know, the typical active stabilization with some gyroscopic data and it gives you a really nice stabilized onboard image. Uh, it does crop in a little bit to allow for some of that movement you know, along the sides of the frame but gives you a really nice stabilized image that uh, looks very good. Additionally, along with a lot of the other Sony cameras, uh, it does record the gyroscopic data, so you can run it through Sony's software, Catalyst Browse, and you can stabilize your footage that way if you want to get the full, uh, full frame, but it does have the ability to do it on board via the dynamic active stabilization if you so choose. This camera includes focus breathing compensation with compatible Sony lenses, so you don't have to worry about the focus you know, moving out, coming back in. It does also have variable shutter and anti-flickering settings you can play with to help you out in some of those interesting lighting conditions, you know, with LEDs or TVs or screens or whatever it is. Uh, you should be able to get some good shots even in those conditions. And one of the most exciting features that this camera has is with the dedicated AI processing unit, which can unlock a few things for you. First and foremost, uh, one of the, the key things about this is it adds the ability to do auto framing which means if you're filming by yourself and your camera is locked off on a tripod, you can turn on this setting. It has multiple different things you can customize within it, but what it's going to do is it's going to automatically crop and follow you within the frame to keep you centered and give you that sense that um, you're getting some camera movement even though the camera is locked off. Additionally, it also really enhances the autofocus capabilities of this camera. Sony cameras have always had really good autofocus in the past, but this takes it to the next level. So what it does is they've had eye tracking for a while, but now even when the subject is you know, facing away from the camera, uh, it, it can follow the torso and the back of the head of that subject. When they flip back around, turn towards the camera, boom, locks back onto the eyes. You don't have to worry about anything ever getting out of focus uh, just because there wasn't an eye for the camera to focus on. Um, additionally, you can have it, you can tap on a subject on the touch screen and it'll um, keep that in memory and so it'll only focus or auto frame that individual even if there's somebody else nearby. Again, there's a whole bunch of settings you can play with to kind of customize this to what you're looking for. If that person leaves the frame and comes back, it'll snap back onto them, kind of ignore that other person, but really cool capabilities that you have to play around with and it unlocks a lot of dynamic shots. So another thing that it does is, in the past, these cameras haven't had the ability to do eye tracking on animals. 
So if you're a wildlife photographer out there, this is going to be hugely important for you. Uh, I know a lot of those shots, you know, are once in a lifetime images. And if you miss the focus by just a hair, literally a hair, you know, your, your shots basically ruined or, you know, you miss that chance. But with the eye tracking for animals and birds, I think even, uh, probably not insects, but animals and birds, um, you can really be sure that you're getting that shot when you need it. Um, so again, the AI processing unit in this thing is pretty impressive. So I'll give you some demos of some of these features and you can judge for yourself, but uh, pretty cool stuff, lots of improvement and uh, unlocks a lot of capabilities just via the camera alone. All right guys, I um, wanna do a couple quick tests of the different steady shot modes. So here we go with the steady shot mode turned off. Um, this is just the standard zero stabilization whatsoever. Um, I think the lens OSS is still active, but the camera is not doing any sort of uh, stabilization internally. So also kind of just want to give you some different lighting conditions. I'm just walking through my house right now because the weather is a little bit weird outside. But uh, yeah, so we got some overhead lights going. We got some different uh, morning light coming through the windows and whatnot. So yep, just kind of wanted to show you what this looks like with steady shot mode turned off. Okay. Here is the standard steady shot mode. Um, again, just walking through the house, wanted to give you some tests of what the different steady shot modes can do and uh, how this camera performs as far as image stabilization goes. So here we go, just walking through the living room. Excuse the mess with the baby stuff. Um, we got a six month old, so uh, yep, gotta have some stuff for her to play with. So yeah, here's the standard steady shot mode. And then next we will turn it on to the active mode. All right guys, so here is the active steady shot mode. You can see it did crop in a little bit more. I don't know if you could tell, but I'm having to hold the camera a little bit further out. So my arm's getting a little bit sore. Um, but I do have a correction to make. In the, uh, in the previous clips I was talking about that this camera has the dynamic active steady shot mode, uh, which it actually does not. So that mode, I believe, is only found on the ZV-E1. Maybe some of the other um, cameras as well. I just kind of figured that it was on this uh, with, all, with the different AI processing unit. Um, I, I just, I guess I figured and, you know, reading stuff online, the different articles, it says it has it, but playing through the menus, uh, it doesn't. And then I looked on Sony's website and it looks like it's it's not even listed there uh, for this camera as well. So this is the active steady shot mode, um, the most steady of the three. And now my arm's definitely shaking because it's getting a little heavy and I've done this a few times now. So we'll see how uh, stable the actual image is. All right guys, so I wanna do some testing of the auto framing. Right now it's set to medium crop so there's a few different settings. I'm just gonna start walking around and talking about it a little bit. Um, hopefully you can see on the screen what the auto focus and auto framing is doing. Um, there are multiple settings you can change. You can change the speed at which the camera crops. You can also change the crop level to be, you know, either super tight in on your face, uh, what they call medium crop, which is, you know, medium, or there's a small crop which keeps you still pretty far away from, uh, from the frame, um, you know, not super close in on your face. So I'm just gonna be walking around. I'm curious kind of what's going on on the screen. It should be picking up my eye whenever I'm looking at the camera and it should be focusing on either my back or the back of my head uh, whenever I'm looking away from the camera. So, just a real quick test of the auto framing. This is the medium crop at medium speed. Um, next, I'm gonna bump it up to the large crop with a super high speed so you can see kind of what the difference is. And uh, there we go. So that's medium crop. All right, guys, so I'm gonna change the setting in here. I'm gonna show you the different options that we have. So I'm gonna click on menu. We're gonna go to auto framing settings. And this is what that clip was set at. So it was actually set to the small crop level. Uh, first and foremost, you turn it either on or off. 
So we want it on here. You can change when it starts. So auto start, uh, that's what I had it set to. It, you know, it decided to do it kind of all on its own. You can do start when tracking. So if you click on a subject, then it's gonna start doing it then. Uh, you can do it you know, with some delay there if you want. Uh, but I'm just gonna leave it at auto start crop level. I'm gonna change this up to large. So we're just gonna go from one extreme to the other just to see the difference there. Um, then we're gonna go to frame tracking speed. I'm gonna bump this up to fast, so this should look a little bit weird, um, but I, I do just kind of want to see what it does. Uh, so this movie recording slash streaming, so this is telling you you can, there's basically two different settings here. You can, if you have an external monitor coming over, then you can have one thing show the full, uh, one screen show the crop, etc. So I'm just going to leave it here. I don't have an HDMI output connected, so I'm just going to leave it to crop so you can see on the screen what's happening. So I'm going to get out of there. We're just going to hit record, and then I'm just going to go do exactly the same thing that I did before. I'm going to walk around, uh, let it see me first, I guess. I don't know if I need to do that, but then I'm just going to start walking around like I did before, and we will see what it does. Um, again, this is the large crop on the auto framing setting uh, with the fast speed. So if I wanted to stop and talk, I don't really know what it's going to do. And maybe it'll zoom in on my face like it thinks that I'm, you know, doing a talking headshot or whatever. Uh, or maybe it'll zoom out because there's no more movement. So it doesn't need, you know, to be so zoomed in. I don't know. We're going to learn together. So I'm just going to keep walking around and do some more testing. Um, forgive the fact that I'm just sitting in my living room. The weather's a little bit weird outside. It decided to start raining in September in Southern California. So uh, here we are. Uh, also, I didn't really want to set up any of the lights. I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, you know, straight out of the box, basically look at what this camera can do. Um, I don't have any lights on in the house. This is just, you know, the morning light coming through the windows. Uh, it is a little bit of a cloudy day, so nothing crazy. Um, but again, just wanna give you a, a real good picture of what this camera is capable of uh, straight out of the box. So I hope it was doing some auto framing there. I don't know, I, don't know. I can't see the screen, uh, but we're gonna find out afterwards. So here we go, auto framing, large crop, fast. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for the camera. Uh, just in case you're curious, I changed the auto framing settings to the medium crop and the medium speed. So just if you're, you know, if you're curious what's going on, I wanted to do one final test with the middle settings. Um, so that's what this is. But overall, uh, we've looked at the, you know, the body of the camera. We've talked about the internal specs. We've talked about some of the AI features, uh, played with those a little bit. So. Overall, love this camera, very happy with the purchase, and probably the reason most of you are looking at this camera is the one thing that we haven't covered yet, which is the price. So there's a few different options for this camera. You can get the camera body only for $1,400. There's a camera kit lens, uh, camera body and kit, camera body and lens kit, uh, 16 to 50 millimeters. If you wanna go that route, that's 100 bucks more, so that's gonna be 1,500 bucks or there's the option that I did, which is with the 18 to 135, which is going for uh, 1800 bucks or 1799. Uh, the 18 to 135 lens does retail just by itself for about 650. So you are saving a little bit of, uh, a little bit of cash there if you wanna go that route. But overall, I'm just gonna keep moving around a little bit just to see what the framing does, give you, uh, you know, an idea of what that feature is like. But um, overall, love the camera, uh, very happy with the purchase. So yeah, uh, thanks again. If you're still around, please consider subscribing, like this video, and uh, stick around for more content just like this. I go through all things camera, tech, filmmaking, all sorts of things. So keep an eye out for the next video, and I'll see you then.